Hi friends! So, something a little different for you guys today. I did this process video and I was like, you know, this is the one that I need to make like a little class for. So we have a class today, just a single episode. If you guys like it, I can maybe do more. But I decided what I'm gonna do is I am going to give you guys a supply list. You can pause the video, go grab all your things, and we can make this together. This one in particular, I don't know if all of these uh, episodes are going to be around scraps. They might be, I just might make it a scrappy, use your scrap series, um, because I feel like that's what I excel at in this area. I love using my scraps and being frugal and making my stash stretch and killing my kits. I feel like I love when I get to the end of a kit and I just need to use the rest of it. It can be some of the most challenging things to be creative and figure out how to make what you have works. And this page in particular, I feel like anyone can make this page with whatever they have. And it's a really, really good one if you get to the end of a kit um, to kind of use the final bits and pieces and things that might be sitting in your stash for a while. So I love this. You guys are going to need strips that are 12 inches long of scraps. Do not do not even look, I, where's my camera? Do not even look at your 12 by 12s today, okay? Not for this page, no 12 by 12s. You will need a base to glue everything on top of. Other than that, scraps only. <laughs> we are going to be using a little sneaky peek. Strips of paper, we are going to layer to make your 12 by 12, okay? I personally like to, you can either go to your scrap drawer and pull out all of one color. Maybe just pick two colors you like to do together, maybe plus a neutral. I chose, this is a Christmas Christmassy one, so I have a green and white polka dot, a red solid, a wood grain, and kind of a pinky red design. That's a pattern. Um, but you don't have to, you can literally use whatever you have and then you're gonna need pictures to go across the page. And honestly, this is a page you could use whatever pictures you have. I used three four by fours that kind of span most of the width. I crunched them together a little bit so that I could see the paper on either side. But honestly, if you need to really be frugal and you don't have enough paper, you can have enough pictures to go edge to edge and that way you don't have to worry about having to have scraps behind where those are gonna be. So 12 inch strips <laughs> of scraps you need pictures um i'm doing a photo strip you can do whatever you want um, you're going to need go to your washi stash i know a lot of you have washi stash that does not get used up and i now have more washi from my lovely friend who sent me felicity jane stuff so i challenged myself to get at least two of them on this page um if you have labels in your stash, go ahead and grab those, especially if you have them in coordinating colors, if not just grab like a neutral. That's what's great about this kind of design is no matter what color your scraps are, you could grab a neutral. Um, if you have um, film strips, die cuts, frames, grab those. Otherwise, a lot of this stuff you can literally just use scraps for. If you don't have labels, we can just use little scraps of paper. If you don't have frames or the film strips. You can just use scrap paper, make a fishtail banner, make a tag. Tags would be really cute on this page actually. And then we're gonna go to our alpha sheets, the ones that are dead that we're holding on to. Find an ampersand and find a couple asterisks because you all know you have a dead sticker sheet somewhere that still has ampersands and stickers on and uh, asterisks on it. And then uh, tiny word stickers and what else do you guys need to grab? That's mostly what I used. And then if you want to do the same type of title I did, uh, I had a die cut that I fussy cut. You could easily print this on your computer and fussy cut it. Or um, those thickers that have words. If you have any of those sitting around, um, feel free to use those too. But we're gonna get into the process video. I slowed it down so instead of it being like sped up to I speed it up a lot. I'm gonna keep it a little slower so I can go through the process and we can kind of make this together. Feel free to pause at different points if you need to, to catch up, but I think this is gonna be fun. I'm excited. <laughs> so here we go. Alrighty, so I have my collection of strips. See, notice there's no 12 by 12s. 
I have a couple things laid out. At this point, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with this page, but I knew it was Christmassy. Marcus, for one of my Christmas presents, took me to see the Nutcracker at the Fox um, in Atlanta. So this is documenting that. I figured uh, green and red would be a good combo. And I just so happened to have a couple scraps of Felicity Jane that are in that kind of red and green and I also had some scraps of wood grain so I decided I had enough to piece them together to form a 12 by 12 so that's what I decided to do. What I like to do with my scraps um, is I kind of like to sandwich them. You can see that green band is in the middle. Um, I have that red diamond pattern cut into two pieces that are going to stack on top of the green. Uh, that solid red I'm also going to cut cut into two pieces so it's also stacked stacked top and bottom and then the wood grain is going to be um, the very top and very bottom and I actually decided to leave the branding strip on that wood grain I love that row of black and white houses on the bottom I think it's so cute so embrace the branding strips that uh, scallop on that solid is also a branding strip I'm going to fussy cut that scallop so there's a little bit of detail um, right now, seeing all these papers lined up, there's a lot of straight edges. It's just straight across and there's not a whole lot of interest. So cutting out that scallop and even adding a border punch to one or two of these layers could be a fun way to spice it up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue my photos together. Like I mentioned earlier, I had two, three four by fours, so they could have spanned the entire width of the page and saved myself some paper. Um, but because I actually did have enough paper for this one and I wanted to show off what I did get used up, I decided to scooch those together a little bit so that you would be able to see the paper on either side. And now I'm just going to go through the process of gluing all my scraps down to my base. This is just some of that cheap paper that comes preloaded in page protectors. I don't really like using those on pages unless it's just for a little photo mat or something. Um, but they are super handy to be the bases when you are piecing together a bunch of scraps. So another way to use things that might just be sitting around <laughs> in your room. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go through and stick all of this down. I'm sorry, this is going to be a little bit more annoying since it's not as sped up. Maybe I should have used my glue runner for this for you guys. I will try to keep that in mind if I end up doing more of these. But I'm just going to sandwich everything together. I really like uh, the way it's balanced by having uh, what's on the top on the bottom. So I'm going to try to keep the same um, pattern as we go. That way it also kind of looks like they're larger pieces of paper than they are. They hopefully will look like they run behind all the other layers. That's the goal at least. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to get the green piece down. But yeah, I love this. I really do not enjoy scrapbooking Christmas for whatever reason. I, I mean, part of it is because I know I have holiday anxiety. <laughs> so I typically, the holidays are a stressful time for me. And so I think that bleeds over into scrapbooking where I just don't want to scrapbook Christmas. And a lot of times I feel like they can be repetitive um, with the color schemes and stuff. So I really enjoyed using Felicity Jane products that weren't exactly Christmas themed, but make something Christmassy out of them. And I ended up really, really loving this page. So that was, that was great. <laughs> Just taking my time here to fussy cut this scallop and then I will cut that into two pieces so I can have a, a little bit of that on the top as well. I don't think I've glued down that green piece yet just so I can make sure I tuck that in. But yeah, that's the process so far. You can see the December die cut I have underneath my little bowl of goodies up there. I kind of just grabbed a bunch of random things. Uh, my lovely Felicity Jane friend sent me um, a bunch of Felicity Jane stuff, but there's a whole little baggie of kind of bits and bobs. So I just fished through it and pulled out anything that I kind of thought was in the color scheme. So that's what's in that little yellow dish up there. <laughs> and then um, the black... The black word thickers are from Holly. They are Christmas themed, so I'm really hoping I could start on those because I have not touched those yet. And then um, I have a bunch of like the crystal, crystal ephemera and cocoa die cuts because those were winter Felicity Jane collections. But the more I played with the random bits and bobs I was just trying to use um, from the non, the stuff that wasn't in a kit, the more I liked it. And then I ended up really loving that it wasn't one particular collection. It was just a, a smattering of um, random things, which is why I love pages like this, because there's such good ways to use your stash. So 
getting this bottom wood grain piece down. I kind of decided to start with opposite sides. So I have my wood grains down on either side. I'm getting that red diamond print down on either side. I think it's technically a pink, but to me it's reading as a red because it's Christmas and I have that darker red on here. So I really love that. Um, it kind of surprises me sometimes the way some colors can read because looking at that paper alone it's definitely a pink <laughs> but I I love how it reads as a red on this page so super happy about that and some of the labels I pull in are technically pink but again it's the same color as that diamond print and it just reads really well on this page for some reason so I think I'm almost done with the background. <laughs> I like working from the outside because that way I can really try to space everything. I wasn't quite sure how much of this scallop was going to cover up different pieces um, or where exactly I wanted that green piece to lay. Here I decided to use a notebook edge punch on the portion of that red that's gonna be towards the top. I think when you have a solid piece of paper like this going over a pattern or another salad really doesn't matter but I love the impact a border punch has with a solid like this um, because I think it just really stands out and pops and I love that now I have this notebook edge punch that's going to be across the top and then I have this nice scallop that's across the bottom I also really like the scallop I don't know if it's because it's red or not but it really reminded me of the curtain so I love that we we're at a ballet with you know the big red curtain <laughs> So I think it's kind of cool that that's mimicked a little bit in a subtle way on the page. So I thought that was kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and get the red pieces down. And then I'll finally be able to commit <laughs> with where I want this green and how much I want of which side to show before I get my photos down and can start with the fun part, which is embellishment. Um, so yeah. That's all we're doing right now. If you want to pause at this point to get all your strips down, you can go ahead and do that. And we'll reconvene, but I'm just gonna get the rest of these down and get my photos down and then we will continue. So that's the goal. I hope everyone's been doing really well. I miss you guys, but I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> outside of the house. So if you follow Instagram or anything like that, hopefully you guys can keep up to date with what I've been up to, but I've been having a lot of fun. We've been doing lots of things. Um, so I think it's it's fun that now that I, I have spaced out videos and can really take my time without any pressure, I'm having a lot more fun and being able to be more creative. <laughs> so I'm enjoying it. Here's our final piece. Again, I'm just trying to decide how much of that I want to show. And I think I end up trimming off some of it that I don't need because I prefer for the green to show more since that's the only spot of green on this page is that one pattern. So I'm going to trim the red a little bit. I'm going to save that in case I need a snippet of that red anywhere else on the page. I don't end up needing it, but better safe than sorry. <laughs> now I have that in just in case I need another, another bit of it. But I'm going to tuck that under and get my pictures down. So I think the next thing I did was fish through embellishment. I can't remember. I literally just made this page yesterday and I already can't remember what order I did stuff in. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll find out together. I may have actually taken a break after. No, I didn't. I did this all in one sitting. I'm pretty sure. This was a fun one. I didn't realize how slowing it down just a little more feels way longer. <laughs> okay, there we go. Background is done and I think it's so cute and we did it just using scraps. So now that I have my photos, we're gonna start looking through embellishment. There's the cocoa and the crystal goodies that I contemplated using initially because they were winter theme. But there's a lot of gray and pink, and I really just wanted to stick to this kind of red and green traditional Christmas color scheme. I also wasn't sure if I was going to add gold or not, so I did have those brads in case I added gold. But as I continued doing the page, I just didn't add gold and didn't really feel like I needed it by the end. I am gonna speed through this part so you don't have to watch me fussy cut this whole thing. <laughs> but um, even though this is a die cut, you can literally, reminder for everyone this is what I used to do and I never had thickers or alphas or whatever like 
you can print your title in whatever font, whatever size you want on the computer and just fussy cut it. That's all you gotta do. So that's an easy way to do it. You can even print it on scrapbook paper itself. Um, sometimes if the placement is finicky, you can print out your title first on just regular computer paper and then tape your pattern paper over it and reprint it on the same paper just so you know exactly where it's going to be placed. That's a helpful, helpful way to do it. Um, but yeah, just gonna fussy cut this and I'll be, I'll be right back when I'm done. <laughs> Ta-da! And we are done fussy cutting. I contemplated going back and cutting out the middle of the B's, like in the loops and all of that. But I started to think if I did that in the middle of the D and the B, then I'd want to do it in the loop of the D and the B. And then I felt like I would need to do the middle of the E's. And then that seemed too finicky. So I decided not to do any of them. Use your own judgment and do whatever you think is going to look best. I'm going to just leave them. They don't really bother me. Um, this is where I decided I'm going to put that title down along the bottom. So I just wanted a place for it to sit. So this is where I'm going to pull in my washi. I'm going to use my wider washi first. I just decided to do this green or sorry, this red polka dot. And then I'm going to go back with a skinny black and white stripe and layer it over the red washi just to give some more layering and texture and then just tie the, the black and white in from the title and the black and white in from the branding strip underneath. So I'm just trying to get my placement right. And now that I like that, I'm gonna go ahead and just use wet glue to stick this down. I just did not feel like messing with my double-sided tape with all of these fiddly little spots. So I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi. This glue is permanent if you stick it directly down. If you let it dry for a little bit first, it becomes uh, semi-permanent slash temporary and I decided I didn't want to commit just yet because there was no way if I stuck it down I was going to be able to move it so I'm gonna let it just parsley dry a little bit so I have a little wiggle room <laughs> with sticking that down um, while that's off to the side drying I'm gonna start looking at where else I want to incorporate this washi tape I don't want it in just one area um, I want it to feel cohesive across the page so I'm just trying to decide one other place where I could do a strip of it and I decided to go ahead and stick down my photos and then run it across the top of the photos in the opposite diagonal. That's a go-to thing I really like to do is have diagonal embellishment. I think it's a really easy way to make your page balanced so having this washi in the lower left hand corner it made sense for me to have some more washi in the upper right hand corner. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just sticking down my photos and then I'm going to run this washi just kind of over the top two right hand photos. Just so that little washi is balanced and then I'm going to do the same thing with the skinny black and white striped washi and just layer that on top of the red. And that will be the base of my embellishment cluster for the top. That way I just already know there's going to be an embellishment cluster up there. If my title runs into an embellishment cluster on the lower left hand corner, it'll give me that diagonal design that I like and the page will automatically be balanced. I love working this way because you really only have to design one cluster and then you kind of just repeat it <laughs> with slightly different things in the other cluster and it, it works out really, really well. So we're going to be walking through that portion once you have your background pictures and washi down. I'm going to start going through with the embellishment that I pulled. If you have that random baggie of embellishment, go through it and see if anything coordinates. I'm just going to be using labels. So this is where you pull in the, your labels. I really like having different sized labels. So I typically like to layer a smaller one in a contrasting color over a larger one. So here I have the darker red over the lighter pink. And then I'm just going to use that as a base for a focal point. So at the top, I'm going to pull in my ampersand. I had a die cut ampersand, but we all have a bunch of ampersands on our thicker sheets and our alpha sheets that don't get used a lot of the time. So I'm just going to use that up there. Um, this section here, the die cut I'm using has words on it. So that's kind of going to be my focal point for that one. But again, just staggering them the same way I did at the top. If you don't have die cuts or labels, you can easily do this with just scraps of paper. You can trim them into fishtail banners. You can use border punches to make them look kind of interesting. There's a lot of different ways you can get around not having manufactured embellishment. <laughs> so um, that's, that's kind of a good... Thing to keep in the back of your mind because I remember when I was starting out I was always super frustrated that everyone had these really cute 
ephemera and die cuts and things that coordinated with their page. And I had to be creative about making clusters without that kind of stuff. <laughs> so to finish off this top cluster, I decided to use up one of these 49 and Market uh, film strip pieces. Again, you can use a tag to stick behind there, a glassine bag, a doily, um, just a scrap of paper that you trim into a, a shape. Use that. You can use a punch or a die cut to make a half circle. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can do to, to make these bigger layers that go behind embellishments. But I'm just going to use this little film strip piece and I adore this little cluster at the top. I think it's so cute. So I'm gonna to try to replicate it on the bottom using the same types of things. I'm just going to use this other film strip as the base and layer those two labels on top of it. And then for finishing touches, this is where we're going to be pulling in your asterisks from your alpha sheets. Um, if you have any other thing on the alpha sheet, sometimes they give you extra periods. I really like to use those dots like enamel dots especially if I'm using like a foam thicker and my title is a foam thicker. I love using the periods from that same alpha sheet as embellishment on the page, the same way I would brads or enamel dots. It kind of spreads that texture around the page and the, that color around the page. So that's kind of the idea of what I'm doing with the asterisks. I just happen to have some black chipboard asterisks uh, just loose. So we're going to get them on here and get them used up but I'm committing. I love how these clusters look. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure them, get them all glued down before I start doing that. <laughs> so just gonna take me a minute to fiddle with all of this stuff. I love all these Felicity Jane goodies. Oh my goodness. I'm in like heaven over here. <laughs> I think we're almost there. Just gonna get these final labels down and that ampersand. This ampersand also happens to be chipboard. Uh, otherwise, I would have popped that ampersand up on some foam to give it a little bit of dimension so there's not too many flat things. But the ampersand is chipboard, and the asterisks I'm going to use are actually chipboard too. So I get a little bit of dimension with those things. Um, I only had two, so I'm just doing one in each corner, and I really like how that looks. Again, just using wet glue for the fiddly stuff. I don't have patience to try to do uh, double-sided tape on those. So I'm gonna get one asterisk in each corner and then I'm gonna go through my Felicity Jane Holly word stickers um, for my final finishing touch. If you happen to have brads, sequins, um, enamel dots, uh, any other random small embellishment you want to do as your finishing touch, you can feel free to add them. This is also a good time to do color shine or splatter or anything like that that you want to add. <clears throat> I'm actually not going to do that. If I did have gold on this page, I may have done some gold Heidi Swap color shine, but I kind of really like how this page is looking without any metallic. So I'm just going to use these black Holly Flisty Jane word stickers as my finishing touch just to add a little bit more text and some more black around the page. I'm going to pick out, I think, four different ones and just have uh, some in each cluster. I initially was thinking about doing two of them in each cluster, but after I started putting them down, I just had more space in the lower corner and it looked like it would have been too crowded if I put two in the upper corner. So I do three in the bottom, one in the top. And I kind of like how that's different too. You kind of you can make your clusters the exact same if you feel like it. it's your page. <laughs> I like when there's a little bit of variety between my clusters though. So having three in one side and one in the other, I think makes it a little bit more interesting in my opinion. So the one at the top just says twinkle. The one I'm laying over this frame says memories. I love doing this with my word stickers, layering them over different elements just to connect everything. I think it looks super cute and clustery. Um, there's one that's just a little bow and I thought that was really cute. I have a friend who's a ballet, a professional ballet dancer, and she loves her ribbons and her bows. So I thought that was a sweet little touch to put on this page <laughs> since we went to the ballet. And the last one just says festive. So I thought that was great. Final touch, I'm just journaling Nutcracker at the Fox. Um, and that's it. So here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It's kind of the same, a little different. Um, but I thought this would be a fun one to do with you guys. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.